Hello everybody, I'm Anthony with Rightsy. We are here at TA Tech 2023 and we are conducting executive interviews. We have another great interview for you right now. We are here with Joe from Lensa. Thank you, Joe, for joining us. I hey, appreciate having me. Thank yes, you. awesome. You. So, you know, we're doing these uh, executive interviews to learn more about the industry, insights of what's going on um, as it relates to coming to TA Tech, as well as sharing uh, with the viewers what you do at your company. So please uh, let everybody know uh, who you are, what your role is, and what your company is and does. Sure thing, great. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. My name is Joe Stubblebine. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer for Lensa. Lensa is a career uh, conversation platform. Uh, we're actually headquartered out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, my role is Chief Revenue Officer, which basically means I make a lot of coffee and try and generate some money for the company. The money guy. Uh, we've got about 120 folks uh, with the organization, uh, about 10 Americans, and then the rest of our team is located in our operations center in Budapest, Hungary. So I have the fortune of getting to go often to Eastern Europe. And, oh, that's gotta uh, be nice. I've never been to Budapest, it's a fantastic city. Not Budapest, Bucharest? Bucharest is Romania. Budapest Bro is the capital of Hungary, but it's actually, the S is pronounced like an sh in their language. Oh, that's so what I thought. So when you hear people say Budapest, it's actually the correct pronunciation. Got it, so Budapest is not the right pronunciation. If you're a non-Hungarian, it is, but uh, since I've been there so many times, it's just habit to say Budapest. That's awesome, that's awesome. <laughs> so you guys uh, are primarily based there, and how, how many countries does Lensa operate in? We actually only operate in the United States. Uh, our CEO is Hungarian, his name is Gergo Vari. Uh, he started Lensa in 2014. He had already built the largest job board in Hungary and sold that to Stepstone back in 2013. Okay. So he was able to have a very nice exit from that. His next venture was to build something big in America. Okay. Uh, he went to high school here and also uh, had uh, 10 years here with his family. So we only sell traffic in the United States. All of our front end stuff, our client relations, our sales, accounting, finance, all that is US folks. Uh, all of our development's done in Hungary, but our focus is the job seeker and the employer, uh, and our obviously our other job board partners, uh, sure. customers in the US. Office. So uh, for those out there that don't know, like what makes Lensa different? What, what's the special sauce uh, with Lensa? And, uh, and you know, what are some of the things that you guys do differently? Well, I think if we're talking about from the job seeker perspective, I think one of the things that's really cool about Lensa is, we have over 65,000 company pages on Lensa. Wow. Uh, we get about eight to 9,000 job seeker reviews every single month, speaking on uh, interviewing the CEO, uh, not dissimilar to some of the other major career sites out there, uh, but it creates a really great research tool. We also invest a lot of money in content, uh, how to write better resumes, uh, how to really engage. We have career pathing software where we can identify uh, if you're, let's say, an intern in marketing, how do you get to become a CMO? Nice. What your path is to, to, to get there. So a lot of that kind of stuff. It's mostly job seeker services. Um, and that's probably one of the reasons why we get over 25,000 job seeker registrations every day. Oh, 100%. It sounds like you guys care about your candidates. I mean, that's really important. You know, when we got into this industry, we wanted to be able to do something that didn't really treat the job seeker like they were just a number. Right. That, but, you know, really helping them uh, take their career to the next level and caring about their candidates. Like, I'm just curious, what got you into the online recruitment marketing space? Like, is this have you been in it for a while? Or I what? am actually, unfortunately, an old man in this space. I started in 1998. <laughs> OK, so you probably weren't even born yet. I presume. Oh, my goodness. But, I do. Uh, you're amazing. I was <laughs> I graduated high school before that. Oh, is that right? Wow. 1997. Okay. Wow. All right. Wow. So, Do you yeah. see that? So we're actually fairly close. Fairly yes. Close. Yeah. Our chief technology officer is 28 years old, but everyone says that um, I look younger than him. So that's for you, Hansa. And you heard it from the man himself, Joe. He's <laughs> saying that I was not born before 1998. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I could have just been making it up, though, just for the record. He could have. He could have. Uh, yeah. So actually, in 1998, I was actually an applications developer. I was a programmer. Oh, you've been we hanging out at a Wendy's with a couple guys, and we saw that Dice.com had just come out. That's Monster right. had just come out. We yep. said, oh, we could build something like that. So we started a, a local recruitment site just for the Philadelphia area. And then we expanded to New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, D.C. 
it grew really quickly. Um, back at that time, online job boards were a fairly new phenomenon. Uh, and then we started offering career fairs. We had a recruitment print advertising nice. magazine in the Philadelphia area. So it just kind of scaled from there. And then eventually I sold that business okay. then acquired it back, sold it again to a company called Next, which used to be beyond.com out of Philadelphia. Yes. Uh, and uh, I was there running all of their direct business for about five years and then recently came to Lenta about five years ago. Uh, it was a great opportunity because I'd kind of been working for domestic companies. Okay. I wanted to really get some international exposure. Yeah. Recruitment advertising is massive. Correct. Billions and billions of dollars spent. So now I get to go to Eastern Europe and obviously you're here at this show interacting with all the fantastic people from around the world. I love it. So it's I been love a great it. career. I've been very, very lucky, very blessed. That's awesome. So, you know, you've been in this space for a while now. Um, you're seasoned is what you know someone can say what would you say uh being in this industry for so long that excites you the most over this next year like what's what's the most exciting thing honestly for me hands down it's ai hands down it's ai okay i think since the elaborate of a chat gbt uh there are going to be so many job search functions that are going to be automated and i know in talking with brandon even at bright sea you're starting to integrate ai into your product as yes, well we are. Uh, i think when you look at the proliferation and the speed at which ai is going to start consuming a lot of the manual tasks uh, in recruitment and it's going to be mind-blowing we are currently now writing job descriptions for employers uh, inside lensa we are writing cover That's letters nice. for job seekers we're starting to work on making, uh, helping them more effectively design their LinkedIn profiles. Uh, there's job title normalization, matching. Uh, you will eventually be able to use AI to help uh, you if you are a job seeker through every step of the process from the point at which you d decide what your skills are, what jobs are right for you, uh, how do you contact the folks that are actually hiring for that role, what do you send them in terms of a resume or cover letter, and I know you guys are thinking about all this, right? Uh, and then eventually even engaging during the interview real time. So I I really see AI is, for me, the most exciting opportunity globally for the world and humanity, but specifically in our space, hands down, it's definitely AI. I mean, a lot of people are concerned about AI. They, they say that it's taking all the jobs, it's doing this, it's doing that, but I look at it as more of like a, a resource and like an, an, an addition to to the world, right? And so even, and even if it is, you know, taking away certain jobs, it's also uh, increasing in other ways, right? And so... And for our industry, regardless of the fact, when there's actually less jobs, there's more people looking for jobs, right? So yeah. it ends up helping in that sense. It's interesting. I think there's a, a one to five year uh, opportunity for certainly entrepreneurs like you and others in the room and, and me to try and capitalize on that and really create a, a more frictionless job search and job acquisition experience. Um, I think the long-term effects of AI are still unknown in terms of what's going to happen to lawyers, doctors, therapists, you know, uh, finance folks. A lot of those tasks will be automated, so there's going to be a lot less labor needs. Instead of having 400 coders at your company, you might have 10 that simply monitor and regulate the AI output and make sure that everything is working properly. Uh, of course, there are less job seekers that will be available in the future than there are today. So if some of those jobs do become eliminated, it hopefully will follow a curve of uh, having less humans to fill those jobs. Because as you know, there are more That's job, a good o point. job openings today yeah. uh, than there are people to fill them. Correct. And so it might solve some of that problem short term. But well, the long-term implication could be, and Peter Weddle, obviously the CEO of TA Tech, wrote a fantastic book called uh, Employment in 2118, where someday governments may actually have to pay people to stay home. You might have to tax AI and the capital gains, short-term and long-terms, so that you have enough wow. funding to be able to distribute money to people to stay home because now you're a displaced lawyer or a displaced dentist or a cop copyright. Dentist would be different because that's a robotic type of, uh, <laughs> which will happen down the road as well. Potentially. I mean, a Tesla is an automated autonomous robot now, right? When you have the self-driving feature installed. So the, the really interesting thing is what is going to be the impact of employment and, and AI's effect on that? Uh, think about the milkman that used to deliver milk on your front step, right? Okay. That job became obsolete because more people had automobiles and just uh, go to the store to buy refrigeration me mechanisms and longer shelf life. And so this will be an evolution that when you look five years or ten years or fifteen years from now, certain occupations where I've seen that now with content writers and where it's giving legal advice, it writes contracts, it can write novels, it can create three D movies on the fly using generative images. So what will that do to the total employment marketplace? 
how do you uh, start to counter that now? But short term, just like you're looking at it in your organization, so are we. How do we leverage that to capitalize on it quickly and add value for our customers and your customers now? So we're not going to solve the bigger problems because that's the super smart people. Sure, cybersecurity, you know, uh, copyright infringement, yeah, all those types of things. There's just so many, and and the ethics of it at all. Hundred percent, right? And what happens to those countries that maybe have ethics, and there are other countries that don't. So it's going to be really, um, it's going to be a very interesting thing to see how humanity deals with this. So. Sure, sure, sure. The uh, what type of jobs would you say in the AI space are the hottest jobs that you're seeing come across? Uh, I haven't actually seen a massive amount of them because really, I mean, ChatGPT was kind of the the foray into sort of you know uh, putting this into the general population, and that really only occurred uh, November 30th, right? So uh, there are definitely people that uh, to, to, to develop prompt engineering. Uh, I think using applications development to build a safety application layer on top of your AI model, mm. so that you're not Cyber directly security. exposing yeah. your uh, your users to uh, potentially harmful or misleading or inaccurate information that would be produced out of AI. Um, I definitely think certainly cybersecurity. Uh, AI detection tools so that you know whether the video you're watching or the paper you're reading, uh, those types of uh, development. I, I think there's a lot of demand That's a good in, point. In, in that particular area uh, around the safety and the, the, the productivity of what the engines can, can provide to you. Sure, sure. Uh, and I'm sure there's jobs just like, you know, I have made every single dollar since, I don't know, 1998 off of the internet, right? If I were my parents, I would have had a completely different Worked in the factory or whatever so it may be. Really, the answer to your question is we don't know. I think 10, 15 years from now, there's gonna be jobs that exist and uh, I'll be retired and you'll be 30 then. Uh, so I think at that point, there'll be actually jobs that will happen that we don't even know about. That's today. a really so good it's, point. It's really interesting to kind of see how it's all going to play out. It is. And, you know, we're here at TA Tech, which is, you know, a very innovative uh, conference. Tell us, uh, you know, what you've learned here and, you know, what are some of the topics that you've heard people speak about and maybe share some of those insights. Well, I think I've been at every single TA Tech. I'm on the advisory board for oh, TA wow. Tech okay. as well. So I'm very involved with this organization. Peter and his team do an incredible job. Yes, great uh, people. What's happening now is... And I think uh, my friends at AppCast, you know, phrased it quite well yesterday. We care what the employer cares about. And what does the employer care about? They want to find candidates quickly. They want to match them quickly. They want to interview them and bring them into their organization, right? There is a cost of having unfilled positions. 100%. And what we're seeing now is a lot of these career sites and job boards, and collectively, there's probably a billion dollars worth of recruitment advertising spending on these platforms just in this room. But now you're starting to see where job boards and career sites are communicating more effectively with applicant tracking systems, with uh, purchasing tools. So now it becomes a better ROI for employers. If I'm spending a million dollars a year recruiting for my organization, sure. I want to know what my cost per application is, my cost per click is, my conversion cost, my cost per hire. All those because things. I want to get efficiency out of that. Correct. Certainly a lot of the programmatic tools and pay-per-click tools that exist here now what's happening is this two-way communication piece. It used to be that publishers or job boards would push applications, push Correct. applicants to those jobs, but then we never knew what happened. Right? And so now we're starting to get that data back to say, hey, for every 10 people you sent us, two applied and one got hired. So now we can start to derive a cost per hire. We can also have a benefit for the job seekers in the sense that we can identify what search term what search term triggered that job seeker to apply? Was our matching correct? Are we delivering relevant jobs to our job seekers? So all of those pieces are becoming really substantially improved. Uh, and even we're starting to internally use AI for looking at uh, logs and, and search terms and conversion rates to try and optimize. Sure. Can we put the best job in, in front, front of, of that right job person. seeker? If I put a job in front of you that you're not qualified or not interested in, it's worthless. If you click on it, then that employer just spent money on that click for a candidate that doesn't fit that role. So I think you're seeing now a really strong focus, especially in this weird economy that's going on over the last year, on quality and two-way communications to improve the entire experience between the job seeker and the employer. Mm, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. Well, I appreciate you coming here, sharing your wisdom, speaking to the people out there about uh, what you know. Please let everybody know where they can find you and your company online. Sure. Again, my name is Joe Stubblebine at linkedin.com forward slash Joe Stubblebine, or you can always send me an email, joe at lensa.com. If you are looking for available opportunities, we have over 60 million job listings on Lensa. And of course, if you're looking for a great resume before you come to Lensa, make sure you see right seat.
Man, we really appreciate that. Thank you so much. We are concluding this interview for the TA Tech Executive Interview Series. I'm Anthony with Wrightsy. We're here with Joe from Lensa, Chief Revenue Officer. Thank you very much. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right.